Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about 10x developers. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, what is it you think is so hard that you need a 10x developer? Well, so what I usually say to people is that the fundamental problem that the software industry is facing at this moment is what I like to call a dilution of the term senior. And that dilution basically means that what it meant to be a senior a few years ago is no longer the same sort of deal. Or maybe more accurately it is it, more accurately you would say something along the lines that the requirements on you to be a true senior of your field has increased to the point where the requirements are just going up. You can see that in comparison to how say professional athletes back in the day used to have a certain training regimen and perform at a certain level. But if you compare it to many of the athletes we have today, they are now at the higher level because because the stakes are going up and the requirements on you as an individual is also going up. The same thing is true for software development. And so what I like to say is that there are problems that a single individual can absolutely solve. And if you are very lucky, you might be in a situation where you can make something that enhances your situation at work, you make people more productive or something like that, because as I've defined before, the way that I look at a software developer who can call themselves a 10xer is basically not from the fact that they are typing faster necessarily, but it has to do with how productive can you make basically yourself or in order to uh, make yourself more efficient, but f overall to become a, tr a real 10xer you have to make other people productive. Now. I argue that that is very, very difficult for a software developer who has the idea that, well, I'll just write some code, I will, or in many cases people who specialize just in one area of software development, this is insanely difficult because, as I've mentioned before, the area of things between your writing something on your laptop or like your workstation until that thing goes into production, creates business value, and especially over time, all the things in between have an effect on the net velocity and net quality of your system. And a pure backend developer will not, in my opinion, be able to fix that problem, depending, of course, it depends on the systems and so forth. So just keep take this with a pinch of salt, guys. But in general, a backend developer will not fix that, a frontend developer will not fix that, a DevOps person will not fix that. Usually what we do is that we try to hire more and more people to try to figure out different aspects of this. And I've only ever seen that if in many cases fail miserably because the only people who can truly succeed at those sorts of things is usually individuals who have uh, they have a problem, like they, their understanding of what it is truly that makes everybody unproductive is limited to their specific area. And if you're lucky, you can tweak things, as I like to say, everything in software development in terms of what a team can achieve or an individual can achieve is very easy, as long as it's only a problem that you have or something the way you have full control over the problem. A classic one is your team owns your own GitHub pipeline or GitHub actions or something like that. It is trivial for you to go somewhere and find like a little plugin or something like that put that in your pipeline and then you're done because you have no external dependencies. But if, let's say, the DevOps people wants to improve something about security within their company, they're basically locked or they're fucked basically because the only way they can achieve that goal is by getting every single team to do some work. And that means that they have to do politics, they have to get that schedule, they have to get buy-ins and like all this other stuff that happens when you have to do something at scale. And that is where the 10xer starts, uh, in my opinion, this is where the realm of 10x or maybe even more than 10x starts, that's where it starts. You're dealing with what I call a systematic problem. A systematic problem is something along the lines of you have a process or you have coding practices or you have an architecture that isn't working. It is something that is inherent to the system at this point. It is something where if you just continue as you are, 
you will never solve that problem because you need someone to do something on your, on the company's behalf who has a holistic understanding of what the root real problem is and address that. And in some cases that is you have some messy code somewhere, that's an easy problem. Uh, in some cases it is that the team doesn't actually have the right people in it. In some cases it is that there's not a collaboration going on, like the people who are shipping code, they don't actually talk to the people who are consuming it or so forth and so forth. And the, the, the end result is always the same you are not either shipping as quickly as you want, the system is of low quality or people are in general unhappy with the system. So how do you solve that? Well, a standard company will do the thing that they always do and that is to hire a new manager. The problem that I argue is that that will not solve the issue because all a manager can in essence do, and I've seen this a hundred times guys, is that they will impose a few uh, agile practices, they will facilitate a few conversations and basically in the lineup that I talked about, the front-end engineer, the back-end developer and the and the DevOps person or the ops person, they're just adding another head to that equation. Okay, so now you have a PO who's going to take care of the perspective of the user. But what you actually need to solve this fundamental problem, to solve an issue that is this difficult, is a true 10xer. And when I talk about a 10x developer, it is literally an individual who has such a broad understanding of the whole process of delivering software. So they understand that if I'm going to build the right architecture for my system, I need to know the users because the users have certain requirements. So I need to figure out what those are before I start sitting down and coding. I have to this day never met a back end or front end developer. Like most people don't even think about that. They just sit down and take the next story but they don't actually take the time to understand their business or their model, like the domain model or their usage or anything like that. And then the next thing comes, all right, so now I need to optimize my backend APIs so that they can communicate efficiently with my front-end development uh, and my front-end code. That's also a conversation. Many developers don't actually think about that. How do you create a nice API? that is easy to consume, what type of architecture do you need for that so that the client that is going to consume it is going to do that in a ready fashion, it's going to be performant and it's also going to mirror the sort of business requirements that you're going to have today and going forward. And so the core issues that I usually talk about when I talk about a true 10x -er, uh, are these basically. First and foremost, you need to be able to create a commercial grade quality system and I mean testing strategies, I mean design of APIs, I mean design of code bases and you know, like, like uh, version control architecture and things like that. That in of itself is a whole, like, guys, there are senior developers who have worked for 20 years who do not know how to do this. Secondly, you will need to be able to design your development process in such a way that basically any software developer could work on it. Junior developers need to be able to know what they're doing, medium level seniors, you basically have to take care of your source control architecture, like the way you deal with your source code. Because if you don't, you, all that has to happen is that you go on vacation and the whole thing starts rotting again. The, and that's not sustainable because as I've said, that brings us to the next thing, which is the hardest part that I argue in software, that is to maintain delivery speed and quality while scaling over time. That is nigh on impossible. I have to this day never met a company who can do that apart from a few services because as I've said many times before guys, the problem is never to get one team working fairly well. The problem is to get all the teams to work at a decent level because the problem with the distributed system in the large scale, larger companies is that it doesn't matter if one single system in the whole thing is doing everything perfectly if everything else is shit around it because the net effect is on the user and the customer is still bad. And that is the last part that needs a 10xer. You need to take the learnings and the efficiency of some high performance team somewhere, all the practices that they are using, and you need to scale that to basically an entire organization. These are the sorts of issues I would call are hard enough that you require a genius level or 10x level developer to solve. So what I want you to take away from this is that, well, at least from my perspective, uh, problems that are hard enough that it needs a 10x developer is, as I said, you're, you're literally looking at fixing what I call a systematic problem. A, like, and these things are very, very difficult, guys. Like I argue that they are so difficult that most companies just try to figure out better ways of mitigating the problem. It is true genius. The people that I've seen solving these things, they're usually solving one piece here or one piece there. Like so really smart developers will solve a problem. As I said, it's usually a problem that is within their realm. Uh, you see a back-end developer improve an API here and there. You see a front-end developer improve the build pipeline or an ops person. Like they, they do these little things here and there. But to solve the holistic problem, 
where like all the pieces sort of fit together and actually have a, you have a really smooth team uh, which works really efficiently and trust each other and all of that stuff they have the best uh, given the circumstances set up for delivering work and doing so consistently with high quality over time all of these sorts of things requires it basically requires all of these different people and to find a solution that holistically solves all of them as I've said guys the reason why it's usually very difficult for you to find these sorts of well working setups and why most people say that on average code is shit in every project is because it's that difficult to, f to find an individual because I truly believe that you can't fix this with one front end developer one back end but like it, you need someone who truly understands how every piece fits together and most people don't know that because they just know their area but to solve it fundamentally you need to have an overview of all the things and as I like to uh, make the analogy it's a little bit like like being a composer, like the uh, a director in a band or something like that, you need to know all the instruments and all the different players within the orchestra to uh, be able to navigate everything. And most companies don't hire people like that because they they are basically impossible to find to begin with. Uh, like the true 10xers, they hire a manager who manages people, but they don't have the solutions to those problems either. What they do is usually just facilitate a discussion between the same people who are unable to solve that problem either. And that's why I tell people, that is the real problem in IT at this point. We have gotten to a point where we are not training people to take holistic ownership over the entire delivery process. You're training a front-end developer or a back-end developer or a DevOps person. What you should be training are senior software developers because being senior today means more than it used to maybe 5, 10, uh, 20 years ago. Have a great day.